We're here at the corner of Don Gaspar and Paseo de Peralta. I'm Dorothy McDonald Thompson Smoker, and I would like to share a little history with you about this corner. Back in the early part of the century, of the 20th century, the Southern Baptist Con Convention considered New Mexico to be a mission field. And so the Home Mission Board bought this corner anticipating building a church here in, uh, shortly thereafter. They bought this in 1912, the same year that New Mexico became a state. By 1917, there were uh, families, individuals here, desiring to get that church started. So the story goes that a group of women went around the town gathering up potential uh, church members and there was a tent erected on this corner followed by a, of course, a tent revival. The church was organized as a result of that tent revival in 1917 in August. There were 23 members. Of course, they needed a permanent home. So by 1921, now there were 60 members. They had decided to enter a building program. They borrowed $33,900, I think from a local bank, and began construction on the church that spring of 1921. Some of the church members mortgaged their homes to secure that uh, loan. In the fall of 1921, the church was built and I am standing probably where the top of the church stairs were. The front door was catty corner to a, the building which sat pretty much squarely on the, on the corner. It was a beautiful Victorian brick building. Uh, there were stained glass windows, not elaborate ones, but beautiful stained glass windows. I can rem uh, it was in 1942 that my family began attending this church. And I can remember sitting in the sanctuary and the sun filtering through in, uh, into the sanctuary through those stained glass windows. In uh, 1944, I accepted Jesus as my Savior and I was baptized in the baptistry of this church. The baptistry uh, had a beautiful painting in, at, in the background, uh, a very calm mountain stream. It had been painted by Hope Wiley, who was a deacon of the church. He also was a civil engineer. I think he worked for the state of New Mexico, but a very fine leader in the church. So that was my experience in front of the uh, baptistry. In 1946, I remember a, an exciting event. It was um, the, uh, the burning of the note from that loan that had been taken out in 1921. That was that $33,900 loan and the church had paid it off by 1946 and so there was a ceremony uh, in the front of the church on Sunday morning and what was so impressive to me is that there were some charter members still living who took part in that ceremony. I can remember Granny Seaver. I can remember her daughter, Mary Seaver Scargill, and the chairman of the deacons, uh, uh, Brother Starkey, and there were probably others. Also to commemorate that event, uh, another member of the church, Lola Melvin, who happened to be one of our neighbors in Tosuki, purchased a, a new 
electric Hammond organ to commemorate the burning of that note. It was also about that time that we hired a full-time music uh, minister. His name was Truett Black. Truett was a graduate of Hardin-Simmons Baptist University in Abilene. He had a beautiful, beautiful baritone voice, and he was a tremendous choir director. He also played the organ, but um, Truett uh, gave voice lessons, and my mother decided that I needed to take voice lessons. So I, uh, she paid Truett with butter and milk because we had a cow. But back to the organ. When the organ was purchased, Nell Lamond was my junior high music teacher. She began playing the organ here in the church when it was located here back in the late 40s and when the church was moved to uh, Old Pegas Trail where it is today, she continued to play the organ probably for over 50 years. And of course she married a local grocer, Charlie Batts, so people today will remember Nell Batts, but she began playing the organ when the church was located on this spot. Also, uh, since I was taking voice lessons at that time from our music minister, I began singing in the choir at age 13 and standing next to uh, Mary Seaver Scargill, a wonderful soprano. But anyway, I have been singing in the choir from age 13 to the present time. In 1953, the church called a a wonderful man as pastor, R.Y. Bradford. He was a, a very smart individual. He was a wonderful pastor and leader, a forward-thinking leader. Here we were on this corner. It's busy today, but it is also, it was also quite busy then. It was a residential area and there was absolutely no space to expand the church and no place for people to park when they came. So uh, Brother Bradford and other leaders in the church began to talk of building a new church, but first we had to secure the land on which to build the church. My mother, Marge McDonald Viles, was on the committee that selected the land. They chose uh, a hilltop on the Las Vegas Highway and borrowed $17,000 to purchase nine and a half acres. That was in 1955. One year later, that $17,000 loan had been paid in 1956 and plans went forward to build the new church. Hope Wiley, again, uh, Deacon Hope Wiley chaired the building committee and they uh, immediately began negotiations with an architectural firm here in Santa Fe. It was the John Gaw Meme architectural firm. John Gaw Meme is the premier architect in this area historically. He, he's done uh, designed many buildings and at UNM he was secured, his firm was secured to do the planning, architectural planning for the new church. Ground was broken in 1959, I believe in the uh, early spring of 59. By the fall of 19, by December of 1960, the building was complete and so the membership moved out of this building into the new building in the fall of 1960. Of course, all along in the 50s, there had been plans to expand the Capitol. They wanted to build a new state Capitol building, which there it is now, right across the street. 
So this church was going to be demolished in order to make room for the Capitol and today the parking garage behind me. My mother, n noticing that the building was being demolished, salvaged two of the stained glass windows from the old church. Of course, in taking them out of the building, the uh, lead which, uh, with which they were put together was damaged. They were t somewhat bent, and many of the glass rectangles used in those wind windows was broken, but there were two of them. And in 1959, she salvaged those. They have been in a storeroom on our property since 1959. When I uh, joined the uh, Centennial Committee to plan our Centennial celebration, I thought we need to use those stained glass windows. So I talked to a uh, stained glass uh, artist. Her name is Jeannie Guy and she has been making sun catchers. I have one in my pocket here somewhere. She has been designing these sun catchers from the stained glass from the original building. So these will be made available to former and present church members so we have a tie between the old building and the new.